I'm really delighted that you're all here to, to join us uh, in launching the, the new uh, Waterbird population uh, portal. I'm sure this will be a very interesting hour. We packed a lot of uh, people and information into this into the session, so we will try to uh, keep things moving as we go through this hour. First of all, though, I have to apologize for my colleague uh, uh, Vard Hagemeyer. He would be the person actually moderating and taking us through the agenda today. Unfortunately, he fell ill this morning uh, with a bad migraine um, and is unfortunately unable to be with us. So between myself and Tage, we will try to make sure that we get us through the agenda in the allotted time. Um, we are adapting as we uh, are uh, know that we sometimes have to. Today's webinar aims to bring together all of you from around the world who support a common cause, the conservation of our water birds and wetlands. As Wetlands International, we welcome the opportunity to work closely with governments, conventions, experts, NGOs, business and the public around the world in developing and maintaining the water bird population estimate, estimates, the, the so-called WPE, as a definite and short source of information on water birds. In this short one hour webinar today, uh, we will have a short presentation on the portal itself uh, from Tej Munker. I'm sure everybody knows Tej for many years now, and he's been leading this project also for the last uh, year or two. We will have some brief statements from a distinguished panel of representatives of key international and national stakeholders who've relied on the WPE over the last decades and continue to prioritize their work based on this. We really welcome and, and appreciate their participation. We will also make sure that we have some time for some questions and answers from uh, all participants today. Uh, I will give the floor in just a moment to uh, my colleague Nazakat Azimli, and she will explain how we are going to, to work in practice uh, in this uh, Zoom environment. And then finally, we will have some closing remarks from the Environment Agency uh, from of Abu Dhabi. As I said, I will try to keep the agenda moving and keep each person to their allotted time. I will try to do this in a, in a friendly way. Please also help us all just to get to, by, by also respecting the, the, the time limits that you've been asked to adhere to. With that, I'd like to hand over to Nazakat just to explain some of the practicalities. Nazakat. Yeah, hello. Okay. Thanks a lot, Richard. And uh, very happy to welcome you all in this webinar. Uh, I will be really brief, actually. So this uh, you can be calm about that we will. Tej, uh, can we? Yeah. So uh, the session uh, will be recorded, as you have heard in the beginning of the um, um, speech by Richard, and it will be shared on YouTube. So if you uh, mind your name appearing in the session, I will actually be pinning the speakers. So probably your name will not be appearing, but if uh, this is uh, a point of uh, caution for um, some reason, please, um, you can go to next to your name uh, for three dots and change your name um, there. So uh, in order to remain anonymous. If you wish so, um, your microphones for the participants uh, are muted and there is no video uh, available. But as we move to the Q&A session, we will see either uh, I will, I or um, my colleagues will bring the questions further or if any clarifications needed, we will ask you to unmute yourself and um, clarify the questions further. We are very much welcoming the questions in the Q&A box that you can see uh, below. And uh, we would like to divert all the informal chat uh, around getting to know each other, sharing uh, your position, your location uh, into the chat uh, session. And uh, keeping the questions in the Q&A box will help us also to see um, the questions in order. And also uh, you can upvote each other questions, comment on each other questions. And um, so this is a way for us to structure questions more. So we would be very happy if you can put your questions there. And yes, if you have any other questions in terms of technicalities, please feel free to reach out to me through a private or um, like a common chat. So thanks a lot, Richard. Yeah. Thank you, Nazakat. I think we got the key message there, which is to use the chat and to both for technical issues if you have them, but also to make comments, to ask questions, to react to other people's comments, knowing that we will both save, uh, we will use that to identify questions in the second part of this uh, uh, this hour, as well as it will be part of the overall record of what we take away from this uh, from this launch today. Uh, I, I will give the floor in just a moment to Tej, but just first of all, from the perspective of Wetlands International, I would just like to make a few 
brief introductory remarks about this overall of the overall project. Um, of course, you'll, we we did a. There is also a launch of not just this launch event today, but we are also launching this on the website on social media today. So please look out for those messages and send them on, magnify them, make sure that it's not that we make sure that the water bird population estimate is something which is not just a a, a subject for a, a very for us expert group of, of users and practitioners, but also to, to people who are more widely interested in, in wetlands conservation and nature conservation in general. Some of you probably know and were part of, uh, of the, uh, will we'll remember that as Wetlands International, we've already produced five editions of the WPE dating back to 1994 until the fifth edition in 2012. At that point, we launched the, the first portal at the Ramsar Cop in Bucharest in 2012 with support of the Secretariat, the Canadian and the Japanese government. We've been really encouraged by the success of resolutions of the Ramsar Convention who value the WPE as the official source of information on the words water birds. And we're really pleased that it's also used in the designation of Ramsar sites and their management uh, thereafter. However, it's not just the Ramsar Convention. We also see the need, and we also we also want to see a very close alignment with with uh, a number of the, the the really important flyway agreements, initiatives, and site networks, which all require up to date information for designation, management of sites, and also understanding connections between them, which is of course extremely important. Fortunately, nearly a decade on from 2012, we're in a position where we can really upgrade the the technology and the way that we present and manage uh, uh, this information. We really appreciate the general support of the Environment Agency of Abu Dhabi who've supported the development of this new interactive uh, portal, which you're just about to hear a, a, a brief introduction from Tage in just a moment. We see this portal really as a home, um, it's a sort of treasure trove of information that will support the conservation of the world's water birds and help with the management of vital wetlands. Of course, the portal is a live information platform and you know it's not it's not a one, once done tick, we've completed it and we will need to actually update information on an ongoing basis working with a wide range of governments, experts, partners, many, many, many people around the world who, who care about this subject and make sure that we link to formal intergovernmental processes such as the African Eurasian Water Bird Agreement and the East Asian Australasian Flyway Partnership. As was mentioned last week in the Ramsar Standing uh, Committee, Wetlands International is really committed to lead this program of work, to make a, this program of work the best program of work it possibly can be uh, for, for the benefit of all users and to work with others in partnership to mobilize the resources needed for this together with the governments and other key actors. I'm really pleased that today we have representatives of many of the major stakeholders in this work who are going to share some, some thoughts on the portal as it is, perhaps a little, a little look back, but we hope also a look forward to uh, what they see as the, the prospects for using and further developing of the portal in future. We look forward to their comments in just a moment, and I will introduce them uh, each in turn when we get to them. But first of all, I'd like to make time for our own very famous Tage Munker, who will give us an introduction to the portal itself. Tage, please take it away. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, I made this presentation on behalf of the entire team of Wetlands International that have been instrumental in bringing this portal together, as well as a large body of people we've been consulting with on the content of the portal uh, over the last uh, year. Uh, so, just to just to bring you up to speed, Richard has already mentioned that. I think the, it's useful to understand why do we need a portal? And really the needs for the portal are quite clear depending on the stakeholders, because there are a range of stakeholders who use this information and they're keen to get access to up-to-date, easily accessible information on water birds. <clears throat> and these include government agencies at the national level, provincial or state level, local level, as well as site managers. In addition, we, we've heard uh, from Richard that the Ramsar Convention, the Convention on Migratory Species, the CBD or the Convention on Biological Diversity, all have 
the protection and conservation and restoration of populations of uh, water birds and other taxa as part of their mandate. So this becomes very important information for them. We've heard that there are flyway agreements and frameworks such as the Iowa, the East Asian Oscillation Flyway Partnership, the Western Hemisphere Shobert Reserve Network, and the Western Central Asian Flyway Site Network, all very long names, um, <clears throat> which provide a framework for cooperation for, and conservation of migratory water birds in different flyways around the world. In addition, we've got um, a lot of interest from conservationists, researchers dealing with water birds or wetlands or biodiversity in general, and this information is critical to them. We've got development agencies, including multilateral, bilateral, the likes of the UN agencies, such as United Nations Environment Program, UNDP, banks, bilateral, multilateral banks, who also are dealing with the environment and are taking more and more care to look and ensure that their projects and programs are not destroying or negatively affecting wetlands or biodiversity. In addition, the business community is becoming more um, aware of and responsible in dealing with uh, biodiversity and the information in this portal is important for them as well. We've got students both from school level to college level who are interested in such information and we are trying to make it more user friendly for them. Besides, we've got a very large public who always would like information on these subjects. So we've got, I'd say everybody in the world is interested in water birds and wetlands. And so uh, they are part of our stakeholder group. Um, but let's just focus a little bit about the conventions. And you've heard that the Ramsar Convention considers this as an extremely important uh, uh, information source because it provides is this is for designation of sites of international importance for migratory water birds and resident water birds based on what's called criterion six and there have been several resolutions over the last 30 years that the convention has passed that deal with uh, promoting conservation of uh, water birds improving their monitoring requesting for updates to be provided to the to the parties at different meetings calling on the parties to uh, to provide the financial support to get these assessments happening and <clears throat> working with the different flyway frameworks to ensure that there's better collaboration in the way that information is collected and shared because many of these sites that are part of flyway networks are also uh, Ramsar sites. And so there's a very good synergy there. Looking at the next convention, the Convention on Migratory Species, there's been a resolution 1211 that calls on parties to strengthen and enhance monitoring of water birds around the world, as well as their sites, and to be presenting this information to the stakeholders. And that needs to be updated on a regular basis so that the information that the stakeholders have is of the best quality and reliable source, uh, comes from a reliable source. So the water bird population estimates um, has been a hard copy uh, first launched in 1994, and then periodically over the next uh, years, you can see the first five editions that were launched. In 2012, at the Ramsar COP in Romania, we launched a new portal, which was the first portal to bring together all this information together in one place. So you could look at what was happening over time for all these water bird populations. And this is what the portal looked like, uh, looks like. And we've seen from the users uh, across the world that this, in, that this portal has been actively used by governments and all the other stakeholders that I mentioned at the start. Uh, this, uh, this has some uh, advantages, but some drawbacks. As I mentioned, it's been launched in 2012. Worryingly, there's been no review of the entire WPE uh, database since 2011. And as we know, much of the information is pretty outdated as it states here. One in four site assessments are unknown or more than 20 years out of uh, date in the Central Asian Flyway, which really means that this information is not the best as it should be in order to support conservation, particularly where populations are declining rapidly. Additionally, we know from the, <clears throat> from the various assessments 
in the different regions that there's either little or no information that's coming forward or where information is available, such as in the African Eurasian water bird agreement area, that 36% of the populations are worsening. We've had no recent uh, assessments done in the Pacific or for the resident water birds around the world since 2011. So pretty much uh, a lot of the data is getting rapidly dated and we need to move forward in updating that. And at the same time, other surveys uh, and the IUCN red list is showing the numbers of species that are ra rapidly declining is increasing. And just in the last years, more than 25 species has been, have been uplisted. And yet this information is critical for the Ramster sites and flyway network sites, as I mentioned, both in terms of designation and looking at management effectiveness. And if you're not using the right population levels, then you're not doing a good job in your work. We've seen that uh, the governments have used this information in reporting on their Aichi targets uh, in 2020. Um, and also moving forward, the post-2020 biodiversity targets that have been currently discussed are also looking at how to report on the status of species. So this becomes important information to consider. <clears throat> As you heard from Richard, when we launched the portal in 2012, this was based on the available technology in that time and much of it was uh, text-based. And we see the new need to make it more attractive and user-friendly. And I, I hope uh, we can show you that uh, in the last year, we've been able to make a good start in that. So let me jump ahead to the new portal. This is what it looks like. Uh, this is the landing page. And you will see here that it has uh, different uh, quick access buttons to the different uh, international frameworks. Let me use the example and walk you through the portal uh, quickly. So if you press on IVA, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it takes you through uh, searching through IVA populations and immediately, <coughs> excuse me, um, gives you an entire list of all the populations that are covered by AIVA, which as you can see at the top of the list also includes some populations of seabirds. Another entry point into the portal in the explore page is that you can put your pointer on a certain dot and it will tell you how many populations could be found there. And then it, if you click on it, it gives you the entire list. And if you click here at, the, at this button, it takes you directly to the bird life data zone, which gives you more detailed information about the species. But we, in the water bird population estimates, have gone one step lower than species, and that is biogeographic populations, which meets the criteria and needs of the Ramsar Convention and all the flyway partnerships and frameworks. So if you click on the species itself, it gives you the relevant population. And for that, it gives you the size estimates, a quality code, the, the, uh, the trend assessment, is it increasing, decreasing, stable? What is the 1%? And this becomes the most important information for conservation action. <clears throat> Another feature of this portal is that you can use the uh, advanced filter functions, or, and, and you can do that by either simply typing in content either the name of a species or of conservation framework or a family. And you can see all the information for the different populations of that species. You can then click on that and it takes you to an interactive map which shows you the biogeographic maps for each of these populations. And you can then choose here which one you want to use or uh, want to view. And if you click on it, it gives you more information for that particular population. <clears throat> and here you can see that it's uh, called the South Asian non-breeding population. It, is, it falls under the CAF action plan. This is the uh, time period data from WP1 to 5. Similarly for trends and further down the page is the 1% with all the references and notes for that population. So this is very useful information. And you can uh, play with this uh, in many different ways and ask different questions. Another important new functionality is the Analyze page, which has three major uh, tools. And uh, this gives you information in different ways. And you can use the advanced filter function, 
by choosing taxonomic groups or flyways or publications, Ramsar regions, IUCN red lists, or mm -hmm. conservation frameworks for conservation of these populations. And once you apply the filter, you can see particular information. Here, as an example, I've selected the water birds of the East Asian Oscillation Flyway, and you can see all the information about the different species, uh, families, and the, uh, the status in terms of population trends. It also gives you information on the numbers of uh, populations for each of these families. Or you can go to the third widget here selected by uh, WPE5, which is the latest WPE, and it tells you what is the status per Ramsar region. And you can see in some areas, in some regions of Ramsar, populations are doing well, or in Asia, a large proportion are unknown as well as uh, decreasing. So this is, uh, this is important information to help set priorities. Moving on, there are several other pages here which give you a lot of background information, such as populations, flyways, conservation frameworks, information on how this data is presented, the fact that we use the latest um, uh, data uh, and taxonomy from the Handbook of the Birds of the World and BirdLife International. Uh, we have a credits page, obviously, and we're very happy to thank all the major supporters of this work, including for this new portal, the Abu Dhabi Envi Environment Agency Abu Dhabi, and uh, further information on the other uh, contributors and supporters. We've also got a detailed page of downloads where you can get a lot of information. All the previous uh, editions are available here of the WPE5, as well as these conservation status reviews, which are done for different flyways. So far, it's been done in the African Eurasian region, and seven editions of this are available, and the eighth one is underway at the moment. Similarly, you can then click on mm -hmm. references on the right, which gives you all the information uh, several thousand informations, uh, several thousand references are available here. So to summarize, what do we see as the key benefits of this portal and how can it help you? We see that it does provide access to information in a more user-friendly manner, and we hope that you find that it's useful for you. It should help you to more effectively uh, monitor conservation action plans because you're using a, a more up-to-date uh, reference base or baseline. You can, you can access all the historic information from the 1990s and make your own um, uh, summaries for your own needs. You can look at how to use this information to better protect or manage your own wetlands of importance. This can help to improve information for the key biodiversity areas. This will provide a basis for updates of the IUCN red list, global red list or national red list. And it will offer an opportunity for experts to continue to provide information to help update this important live portal. Looking ahead. <clears throat> Paige, I'm going to ask you to wrap up, please. Otherwise, we will have not enough time for our panel lists. Yes, this is the, this is the penultimate slide. Um, looking ahead, we are looking at how to get uh, feedback from you all today and into the next months so that we are sure that this is a good functioning portal and meets your objectives. We will be updating information in the portal over the next uh, year, starting with the forthcoming Iowa Conservation Status Report 8 and the first EAFP Conservation Status Report at the end of this year. We are looking at an update globally of the water bird population, so WPE6, and targeting that for end 2022. Updating WPP with new functionalities also by the end of next year. And as requested by Ramsar to provide an update to Ramsar at each of its meetings of parties. And helping to build a strategic partnership as uh, Richard already introduced. I will end here by thanking a lot of people, organizations and institutions who've been critical in helping us move forward on this journey. Uh, they are listed here. And I'd also like to end by mentioning, I, we really appreciate the support of Environment Agency Abu Dhabi in providing the resources and supporting us over the last years to get this portal to where we are. 
Thank you all. Thank you very much, Tej. I think mm -hmm. I'm sorry to have pushed you on time there, but uh, uh, there is so much, of course, that can be said about this new this new portal and the data that goes in it. I'm sure this is a we're starting a conversation now that is going to go on uh, in the coming days, weeks, months, years, and we really look forward to that. Without further ado, though, I'd like to go. I'd like to hand over to our distinguished members of uh, the panel today, who are going to offer us a reflection on the the portal and 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 what it can, how it's going to to help us all work better together. I would like to invite, first of all, Mr. Jerker. First of all, let me say I apologize in advance for mispronouncing your names. But first of all, I'd like to uh, invite Mr. Jerker. Tamalander, the Director of Science and Policy at the Ramsar Secretariat, um, to offer a few words. The floor is yours. Um, thank you very much, Richard, for that. And uh, no worries. I am very used to having my name mispronounced. It's Jarke Tamelander. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, first of all, uh, let me congratulate Wetlands International on launching, on launching this portal. And, uh, and thank you for also inviting the Secretariat of the Conventional Wetlands to, to participate in this event. Now, um, it goes without saying that uh, this portal has particular significance in the context of the conventional wetlands. And I think you, Richard, alluded to this in your opening remarks. Um, uh, under the convention, parties commit to work towards the wise use of all wetlands. And they also commit to designating suitable wetlands for the list of wetlands of international importance, so-called Ramsar sites, and ensuring their effective management. Now, <clears throat> as I'm sure, I don't need to tell you, I'm sure all of you know, but uh, many water birds congregate, uh, making them highly dependent on the areas in which they congregate and also vulnerable to changes in those areas. And a wetland can be considered internationally important if it regularly supports 1% or more of a given water bird population. So the identification of Ramsar sites on this basis under the so-called criterion six really depends on water bird population data. And since it was originally published in the 1990s, the water bird population estimates is recognized as a tool, perhaps the tool in uh, uh, one of the tools supporting implementation of the convention. And it has been very widely used. I think uh, Tej highlighted some of the key resolutions from this, and, uh, and it certainly is a very central element to Ramsar convention process. Now, that said, quantitative data um, are often patchy, they're incomplete and sometimes outdated. And I think this new water bird populations portal, replacing the one that was launched at the Ramsar Convention Conference of Parties in 2012, provides really significant enhancements in functionality. But importantly, it's, it's also a key element in our efforts to continuously improve data quality and data availability. Uh, and as I mentioned before, that is actually central for advancing the objectives of this convention, but also for our understanding of how we better manage water birds. So in this respect, I want to commend the work by Wetlands International, certainly in, uh, in undertaking this work, as, as well as the support provided by Environment Agency Abu Dhabi. And, uh, and in that context, I take the opportunity to also acknowledge uh, and thank the United Arab Emirates as the chair of the Ramsar Convention at the moment. Um, Criterion 6 has been used to select 867 of the 2,422 Ramsar sites currently on the list. And this number keeps growing. While ensuring conservation of water birds, this also makes a direct and tangible contribution to biodiversity conservation more broadly and to sustainable development. Now, among the most immediate immediately obvious benefits is perhaps recreational and tourism opportunities that it brings, uh, some of which generates very significant income. Uh, and indeed, this is maybe a, a co-driver to, to uh, establishment of Ramsar sites using this criterion. But let's also remember that more than any other ecosystems, wetlands perhaps illustrate the interlinkages among biodiversity, mm -hmm. climate, water, food, health, and so on. 40% of the world's plant and animal species are dependent on wetlands. Coastal wetlands, peatlands have exceptionally high capacity to absorb and store carbon. Almost all of the world's consumption of fresh water is drawn directly or indirectly from wetlands. And wetlands underpin food security for billions of people through fisheries, rice production, and so on. And at the same time, wetlands continue to degrade and disappear at an alarming rate. So, with that, we look forward to really 
continuing and strengthening collaboration with Wetlands International, with our other international organization partners, regional initiatives, conventions, uh, and so on. Uh, in, in supporting our parties expand and strengthen management of the global network of Ramsar sites, including based on Criterion 6 and including these water bird population estimates that underpin the application of Criterion 6. Uh, this is really a, an integral part of our efforts to achieve the Convention's mission of conservation and wise use of all wetlands as a contribution towards achieving sustainable development. And I want to emphasize that this really feeds into our work on a broader level, including supporting parties develop and maintain and use national wetlands inventories, which also provide a basis for reporting on SDG indicator 661, for which the convention is a co-custodian. Uh, we can support parties integrate Ramsar sites um, and other Ramsar obligations into nationally determined contributions under the Paris Agreement so that the goals of that agreement can also be met using nature-based approaches. And of course, we can ensure that the global network of Ramsar sites is increasingly leveraged in implementing and tracking progress on the post-2020 global biodiversity frameworks. So with that, I try to effectively highlight how this approach, a approach within the context of our convention is very central to all our efforts. And, and again, uh, I want to thank you for uh, giving us this space and look forward to some discussion uh, later on in the webinar. Thanks. Yes, okay. thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to keep us moving. I, I think it's also fair to say that, of course, thanks for the words for Wetlands International, but this is the work of many, many people around the world who work for all kinds of other organizations too. I'd like to hand the floor now to Jacques Trouvillet, who's from the Convention of uh, the CMS and the African Eurasian Migratory Waterbird Agreement. Jacques, the floor is yours. Yeah, so, thanks, Richard. And uh, I would like also to congratulate Wetland International for launching this essential tool and why it is so important for the, for the whole CMS family. Uh, for us, accessing the latest information on waterbird population size and trends is critically important for the management of waterbirds population and wetlands. It's held parties of the convention and the agreement and non-party ranch states with prioritizing sites for designation and the international convention and agreement such as Ramsar site and it has already been said, the African Eurasian Flyway Network, the CMS West Central Asian Flyway Site Network, for Siberian crane and other water birds, and a lot, in fact, and the East Asian Australasian Flyway Site Network, of which the CMS is a partner. AIVA is an independent and legally binding treaty with 82 parties which focus on the conservation of water birds and their habitats. The treaty requires the compilation of a conservation status review every three years for each session of the meeting of the party to provide an assessment of the status and trends of more than 500 waterbirds populations, which advises on the progress towards the objective of the agreement, but also on the prioritization of its wealth. This review has been contracted to Wetlands International, so we can see an excellent opportunity to enhance our synergy with other multilateral and environmental agreements. For Eva, the Waterbird Portal uh, Population Portal provides core population size and trend estimates, of course, but also one person biogeographic population threshold that is also delivered through our critical site network tool. This CSN tool identifies more than 3,000 wetlands of international importance that Eva parties are required to prioritize for strengthened management and conservation action to protect and restore migratory, but also resident water bird population. And last but not least, this population size and trends estimates help us to prioritize species for international species action plan, which have demonstrated to be an efficient tool to restore populations when parties are implementing the action of and now the revamped CSN tool provides prediction on changes in water bird population into the future up to 2050, linked to climate change and water ability. 
parties can now assess the risk to lose an important site along the flyway and can manage this site to keep the functionality of the network. CMS parties, as well as IVA parties, call for up-to-date information on the distribution, status, and trends of migratory birds and the sites and habitats they are to need, that they need. This is delivered through the water bird population portal, which we consider as a valuable single source of information. Now that the new portal will include maps of distribution of all population worldwide for the very first time, this will be especially important to all stakeholders, and not, of course, for, for our convention and agreement only. Finally, and importantly, CMS, in one of his resolution already mentioned by Tal, has called for provision of support to initiatives such as the Global Water Bird Fund, established in response to the invitation of Ivan the Ramsa Convention and managed by Wetlands International. And this Global Water Bird Fund is aimed to strengthen local monitoring and ensure updates of the estimates. As we know, there is some gaps in, in, uh, in many regions. While the CMS family is focused on migratory species, we also recognize that migratory species and resident species use the same wetlands and suffer from the same main mine and climate change linked threats. So we, the CMS family, need to work together in synergy with the Ramsa Convention and the Convention on Biological Diversity and other flyway frameworks to maintain and restore water bird population. And this will be achieved through ensuring that the inland and coastal habitats are sustainably managed while meeting the needs of local people. Thanks a lot, Richard. Thank you, Jacques. Inspiring words, and I think it's fair to say the collaboration with the AEWA is one of the, you know, almost like a sort of best case practice of how we actually work between different tools and conventions all together. Of course, this year is a big year for CBD, uh, and we're uh, delighted that Caridad Canals uh, Davila has joined us. Uh, Caridad, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Richard. Thank you so much. And uh, let me start by um, again thanking you for the invitation for uh, to have the CBD in, in this launch and to congratulate all those involved in the launch of the portal. Um, the CBD really welcomes the development of this new portal and to do so in cooperation with uh, various international instruments, including our sister convention, Ramsar CMS, who we see here with us, and international agreements on, on various flyaways. Uh, we also welcome its extension, for example, to include also American flyaways and cooperation with Arctic uh, Migratory Birds initiatives. Let me tell you that the WPE has greatly supported uh, the work of the CBT in the past, uh, in, in, uh, in the past decade, in particular in the achievement of biodiversity to target 11, for example, for identifying uh, priority sites for management and conservation, and also in support of IHE Biodiversity uh, Target 12 for water bird species conservation monitoring, and particularly of those most in decline. And of course, for the CBD, we recognize the importance of, uh, of wetlands, including from providing natural nature-based solutions and multiple benefits, both for biodiversity and for livelihoods. And to reflect uh, their importance, Richard, as, as you mentioned, this year is quite important as we're negotiating the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. And all types of wetlands as ecosystems and also associated species are important part of the scope of the draft of the global biodiversity framework, which is designed both to provide for conservation, but also to ensure the sustainable use of wetlands. So in one way or another, elements relevant to wetlands conservation and their sustainable use are part of every draft target of the GBF as it stands now, whether we're referring to conservation, awareness, or mainstreaming, sustainability of use, or restoration. And just to let me give you a few examples of the, the, the themes of the targets or what, which issues they're going to be addressing. We have targets related currently to spatial planning for addressing land use changes, for example. That address, uh, we have targets that address ecosystem restoration, area-based conservation measures, addressing um, over-exploitation of wild species, um, sustainability of use of wild species, and we also have targets addressing sustainability of productive managed ecosystems. 
So it is in this context that we see parties really uh, significantly benefiting from the portal as a rich source of information, of, of valuable information. For example, the 1% threshold will continue to be critical in monitoring implementation of management actions to protect wetlands and restore water bird populations. So we believe that the information from the portal may support national implementation through support for identification of important biodiversity areas, as well as providing information to measure the progress in implementation through the indicators in the monitoring framework of the global biodiversity framework. We really need the support at the national level from all of you, from our partners. So just to wrap up, we really like to invite all of you and partners, all our partners to contribute to the next stages of the discussions of the negotiations of, of the global biodiversity framework and its monitoring framework. We will be happy to further disseminate this information about the portal and, and, and its new functionalities, uh, including at the national levels through opportunities, for example, in upcoming meetings uh, and, and COP15. And of course, uh, we, as I just said, we welcome contribution from Wetland Internationals and all our partners into the process at the national level where is really where we, we need your support in implementing the global biodiversity framework, uh, including much needed support in capacity building and development as well as transfer of data and, provide, and providing access of reliable information. So this is uh, where, we, where we see the strength and, and where we see these uh, synergistic opportunities going forward. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you, Caridad. I think we have a, a very clear and joint uh, global agenda here that you've sketched out. I'd like to hand over to Doug Watkins, I think well known to you, the Chief Executive of the East Asian Australasian Flyway Partnership. Doug, please. And, yes. Thank you very much. Um, it's my honour to commend the work by Wetlands International in developing and launching the Waterbird Population Portal. This online platform provides easy access to data on the status and distribution of waterbird populations. Congratulations, Wetlands International, uh, and also thank you to the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi for uh, financial support for the portal development. We all know how important uh, data is for the conservation of migratory water birds and their habitats. Uh, this online database provides population estimates, trends, and 1% threshold, thresholds for migratory water birds or for water birds uh, worldwide. In addition, the water bird populations portal will serve as an essential tool for collating water bird population data and providing information for identifying important sites for migratory water birds. It will assist to promote conservation priorities and provide a basis for decision-making, including identifying East Asian Australasian Flyway Partnership uh, network sites and Ramsar sites. Uh, the EAFP is currently working with Wetlands International to develop the first EAAFP conservation status review for the East Asian Australasian Flyway which seeks to adopt a systematic process to maintaining up-to-date information on water bird population estimates to set and adapt priorities for conservation action. Therefore, the launch of the water bird populations portal is very timely. It will serve as, as an essential tool for researchers, conservationists, and other stakeholders involved in site management and broader decision-making. Significant strives significant strides has been made through the Waterbird Populations Portal and EAFP Secretariat is looking forward to supporting this collaborative initiative to develop practical conservation outcomes. Thank you, Wetlands International. Thank you, Doug. Uh, we go from East Asia directly into the Western Hemisphere. Rob Clay, Chief Executive, please uh, take the floor. Thank you, Richard, and, and thank you, everyone. Interest of time, I'm tempted to just say ditto to everything that has gone before me. Um, so thank you all for those, those comments. I, I feel humbled to be part of, of this panel, and I'd like to congratulate Wetlands and, and thank the Environment Agency of Abu Dhabi for the, the support, but also actually take the opportunity to just reflect on this is only possible thanks to the the contributions of really thousands of people around the, the, the world. Thanks to wetlands, thanks to the 
uh, Environment Agency of Abu Dhabi, that information is being brought together in, in one place. But if it weren't for those contributions of many people contributing to um, Whatabird Counts, this, this wouldn't be possible. And to me personally, one of the, the true values of the portal is that all of those volunteers can actually see their efforts reflected in a tool which, as we have, have heard from everybody who has commented to date, is absolutely critical to our site-based conservation efforts. And within the Americas, it's, it's exactly the same. The Western Hemisphere Shorebird Reserve Network is a, a site-based conservation initi initiative for shorebirds, for waterbirds. Uh, we identify those, those sites uh, based on 1% population uh, thresholds. That is, that is only possible if we have the, the population estimates uh, available to do so. I can also speak on behalf of um, the three shorebird flyway conservation initiatives that have been developed over the past uh, five years or so for the Americas Atlantic Flyway, the Pacific Flyway, and the Mid-Continent Flyway. Flyway scale initiatives, but all brought together or all built from a, a site-based approach. And again, population estimates are absolutely critical to uh, being able to to identify those sites and then to be able to monitor success over over time. Just to emphasize that the true value to me of, of having the, the the portal is having that information in one place, having a, a standard source. I've had a I've had the privilege over my 25 plus years in conservation of uh, working on a number of site-based conservation initiatives. And you know, one of the challenges is that with every publication, new data becomes available. And so thresholds are potentially a constantly moving target. There's a lot of value in having information that is standardized, updated on a periodic basis. Um, otherwise, you know, we are constantly chasing moving, uh, moving goalposts. So again, a real value I've seen in that. And then finally, I'd say uh, working in a part of the world where there is not an abundance of information on estimates and trends, just having that flagged itself is incredibly valuable in terms of identifying uh, research needs. Um, so certainly from, from the perspective of, of WISN, from Manamut, the organization that, that houses WISN, and the three Shorebird Flyway initiatives, having this information available in one global publicly accessible place is extremely valuable for identifying where we need to target efforts to actually you know, gather and, and make available new new information so that you know, we can ensure that, that all species, all populations have up to date information. So again, a big thank you to, to wetlands, a big thank you to the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi, and really to all of the, the, the many thousands of volunteers throughout the world that have really made this possible. Thanks, Rob. And I think uh, a very timely reminder to us that really to recognize the work of the thousands or tens of thousands of people around the world who give up their time to do these counts, which is really the bedrock of this of these systems. And of course, there's all kinds of government systems on top of that. But I think without all those sometimes slightly crazy fanatics, we would actually be, we would be, a, we would have not a, a good result in terms of what the conservationists we have at the moment. Just to complete this round now, I'd love to come back to it. Your agency has been mentioned several times. I hope you, uh, you, you heard, you heard the, the great thanks that we have for the Environment Agency in Abu Dhabi, but Dr. Salim Javid, please, uh, you have the opportunity to also to uh, add a few words to this uh, conversation. Thank you, Richard. Uh, thank you, Tej, and my fellow panelists here. It's a privilege and honor to be here with all of you. Uh, personally, to me, it's very pleasing to see the launch of w this portal, uh, which we announced uh, the support for in Ramsar Corp in Dubai a couple of years back. Uh, I hope you all are keeping well and safe. I would just make a couple of quick points. As we all know, we are living in a different world. The world has really changed since 2020. 
whether we, the change is permanent or not, only time will tell. But what has changed for good is the way we create content, the way we use them, and the way we disseminate them. And all of us coming together to, for the launch of this uh, Waterbirds Population Portal is a clear proof of that, that things have changed dramatically. For good. And it really highlights the importance of providing that kind of information in real quick time. What WPP does uh, is access to the latest information on population trends, and which is uh, critically important along with the size information that it gives, and especially for organizations which are particularly government organizations responsible for management of wetlands and water birds. This is something really important given the rapidly changing landscape in some of our countries, such as in the Middle East and other parts of the world. What it also does, it, it helps us in prioritization of wetlands for national and global importance, basically by designation management of sites and inclusion within national level plans, protected area planning, and other plans which would actually prevent incompatible development within the country. It also does, as many of our fellow panelists have alluded to, that it provides a very important piece of information, which is 1% threshold for populations within the flyway region and under Ramsar Convention. So it helps us in designating sites as Ramsar sites. Having the, a, a tool like this or a portal like this is only as good as the information that is going to be updated. So it's really important that we back this development with updated information, and that would come from strong and solid monitoring on the ground. And this is, I think, really critically important that it needs to be continuously updated. What we do here at the Environment Agency that we very strongly believe in this, we have undertaken monitoring for over 20 years on key sites and important water bird populations. Besides this, on the ground monitoring, what we also do is conduct, you know, large-scale tracking work on important migratory species, particularly water. And what it has given to us is kind of new piece of information about not only how these birds use sites within the country, within the emirate that we belong to, but also as they move along the flyway, which then helps us in identify critical sites along their flyway, which is really, really important. And also at the same time, it does provide the challenges that these migratory birds face. So it's it's these kind of uh, ground monitoring tracking work, which is really important and critical for further protection of wetlands and water birds as we move along. We at EAD are particularly pleased to have uh, seen this development. And I personally congratulate Wetland International uh, for the launch of this portal, for making sure this has happened. But uh, what as I emphasized earlier, it's really important that we continue to build on this. And it's time, especially in times like what we are now, it's not only important to just protect, but also proactive, proactively invest in restoring some of the wetland sites. And as many of you have heard that uh, on World Environment Day, UN declared this decade of restoration. I think it's critically important that we proactively look at those options, not just to protect sites, but also be more actively involved in making sure those sites which are in critical need of restoration are restored. So with those few words, I would uh, conclude my uh, remarks. And I know my colleague, uh, Mr. Ahmad, is also there to give concluding remarks on behalf of the agency. But once again, congratulations to Wetlands International and all of us in developing this portal, which I'm sure is going to be a very, very useful tool for all of us, especially for me as an environment agency. We coordinate international water bird census here in the UAE. It really is going to be very, very useful for all those who are volunteers and contributors to that process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Salim. Uh, inspiring words. Glad to hear how it also gets used in practice in uh, specific uh, territories. Um, we, uh, I'm sorry I failed in getting us through exactly all of our agenda uh, in the allotted time. I think we're going to overrun by about five, six minutes, so my apologies for that. Um, if you really have to leave at the top of the hour, of course, we understand. We would love for you can stay with us for another five, six minutes over the top of the hour. And whatever happens, I will give the floor to uh, Mr. Ahmed Al-Hashmi uh, at, at five past, but not just now. 
I'm going to, uh, first of all, I'd like just to invite Tej to take a few questions from participants, uh, from the audience, basically. Um, I know he and uh, Nazakat have been monitoring the chat and Tej, over to you. Let's take, uh, say, three questions and then we'll uh, move towards uh, a wrap up of this session. Thank you very much, Richard. And uh, thank you to all the panel members who really brought to life the value of this tool for the different frameworks and conventions and for the people on the ground who use it uh, in meeting their local, national and international obligations. We have got some very interesting questions, some of which we've tried to and other panel members have already started answering. Uh, so we can we can move through the uh, through the others that we've got. And um, I'll, I'll start uh, before uh, I'll start with this um, session by first inviting a feedback that we would uh, like from uh, Ms. Tomoko Ichikawa from the Ministry of Environment Japan, who uh, is here with us. So please. Thank you, Dr. Tej. Um, my name is Tomoko Ichikawa from the Ministry of the Environment of Japan. We have a number of internationally important wetlands that host a large number of my. We've lost you just now. You are now muted, Tomoko-san. Yes, can you hear okay. me? We can okay. hear you now, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, we have a number of internationally important wetlands that host a large number of migratory and non-migratory water birds. Access to the latest information on water bird population sizes and their trends is critically important for us to conserve water birds and designate Ramsar sites and East Asian Australasian flyway network sites. As very little is known about many species in the Asian region, Further efforts are needed to strengthen continuous monitoring of these species in the field. This requires development of sound monitoring programs in each country. A large number of our species are also migratory. We need information about their migratory routes to plan and implement conservation actions. In this regard, we congratulate Wetlands International and all related to this project on the development of water bird population portal, an extremely meaningful conservation support tool. This portal provides important resources to us and no doubt to other parties that are responsible for the implementation on the Ramsar Convention and relevant flyway frameworks. As population of water birds are changing, it is very important to have up-to-date information on the status and trends and 1% thresholds. We believe it is vital to have relevant countries and partners worldwide to contribute to improving the information and providing resources to maintain and update the portal. This will help fulfill our collective responsibility in the strategic plans of Ramsar and other agreements and initiatives, including EAAFP and CBD, and the commitments to many res resolutions and decisions. I am keen to learn from the distinguished panel as to how we can actively contribute and support each other in a timely and ongoing manner to meet this important goal of keeping the WPP update, up to date. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tomoko-san. Uh, we really appreciate uh, feedback on how the tool can be used and also your important question, because I think this is what is probably on the minds of uh, many, many governments and agencies on how can this information be maintained up to date and how can we work for a collective good for a common purpose that is to deal with conservation of migratory water birds and have the best information uh, together. And I think uh, it comes back to all the governments and partners working together to find ways to regularly update this information 
at a regional level, at a local level, and to ensure that the information is being used so that the value of this information being collected can be uh, used to help raise new interest and support to collect new information and to collate it and to make it available. So maintaining that cycle of interest, awareness, collecting new information, summarizing it needs to be able to continue. And uh, from our side, from Wetlands International, I think at least we are very keen to work with everyone, including uh, governments and uh, uh, flyway frameworks, the conventions in making this happen. And I'm happy to follow up with you afterwards. We have uh, uh, Ms. Doug Watkins from the Flyway Partnership Secretariat for the EFP. And given that you are based in Japan uh, and uh, an important player within the partnership, let's try and use the partnership as one model of how we can uh, address this question. Uh, I think we've got um, lots of uh, interesting questions coming in. So uh, we, we are struggling against uh, time at the moment. So let me take you to another part of the world and put a couple of questions together. Uh, these are, how do we plan to update the information and fill the gaps of the water bird populations worldwide? And one of the questions was specifically within the continental America, is there a way for regional uh, scientists to contribute to their information, uh, contribute their information. So these are very good questions and really are at the heart of the, um, the issue. How can we maintain and update the information within the portal? Very simply, we've heard that for the African Eurasian region, there is the conservation status review, which every three years reaches out to experts in every field to collect this information at the, from the local level to the international level. We have heard also from Doug Watkins of the EAFP that this year, the first conservation status review will be undertaken for the East Asian Oscillation Flyway. That will bring together the latest information. The consultation process has been initiated by the Secretariat. And uh, over the next months, we will see a lot of new information being put together. So basically, too often uh, many flyways have been covered, but the Americas uh, remains a place where a lot of information has been collected, but there are still data gaps in terms of the process. The Central Asian flyway um, is one major area which needs to be filled, as well as the large Pacific uh, uh, Ocean, which with some populations of water birds needs to be assessed. In addition, all the resident populations, non-migratory populations around the world needs to be addressed. So we need to be able to work together with different frameworks and partners to over the next year, ideally, to undertake a review building on the success of the Iowa and the EAFP uh, conservation status reviews to fill the gaps. So together we have a cohesive whole of a new WPE with new information and up-to-date information that can help everybody. I hope this uh, shows that there is a process. We would invite everybody to be part of it. Um, we will make information available on how you can contribute. We've got your contact details now, but it does mean that we've got to work in a systematic way in, in a process that allows for everybody to contribute in the languages they are familiar with, in, with the content they are familiar with, so that together we can reach a much better outcome. I'd like to say that uh, this probably helps to bring together some of the major questions that have been asked in the, uh, in the webinar. Uh, there will be other questions that you will have and we can always welcome them afterwards. Uh, with this, I would like to hand the floor back to Richard. Thank you all for participating in the question. Okay. Uh, that's great. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we will deal with all of the comments and questions that are in the in the chat. Uh, you will see uh, in after this, and uh, we will find a way to pull them together, maybe to publish the if you like the the, the main body of those. As we are out of time, I think we can talk about this this subject all afternoon, all evening, all night, and tomorrow morning as well. However. You all have, I, I, we have really appreciate the fact you've already made an hour of your time um, available to us. I would like to offer the floor to Mr. Ahmed Al Mashi, the acting Di executive director of the terrestrial and marine biodiversity sector 
in the Environment Agency of Abu Dhabi to give us some concluding remarks before we close for today. The floor is yours, Ahmed. Thank you, Islam. I am very happy to see the development of this important and interactive portal by Wetlands International and to see that the timely support Environment Agency Abu Dhabi has provided to produce this portal has borne such go good fruit and has been launched globally today. This tool is a decision support system for water birds and wetlands worldwide. We take this opportunity to invite all governments, NGOs, and experts worldwide to provide their feedback to confirm how this portal practically supports the work and suggestions for improvements in the future. We look forward to receiving this feedback through Wetland International, who, as we know, is planning to follow up meeting, to have a follow-up meeting later at this year. It is very important that this portal is kept live and up to date with the latest information to support conservation action now and into the future. We now call all of you to jointly contribute resources and experts input needed to ensure that the portal can be maintained and continuously updated to benefit all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much for these words. Yes. Um, it remains for me to thank Tage and the team for preparing and uh, uh, bring, giving us all this update on the tool. To thank our distinguished uh, speakers and panelists for their sharing their thoughts. I think that they have given us a lot of uh, insight into how we can actually work together as a community to make this tool really work for everybody, from so that it works for individuals who are out doing uh, individual observations right through to governments and the global processes of the international conventions, which we also hold very dear. I'd like to thank all of the participants for giving your time today, for giving your, your, your ideas, your contributions. This is the end of this uh, webinar, but this is the start of a new phase of collaboration, which we want to go forward with you all to make the, the world population estimates, the portal and their use uh, the most effective possible that we can for the conservation of weapons worldwide. Thanks again. I uh, look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Watch out for lots and lots of emails and messages from Tage about what's going on here. And please, of course, when you see messages on social media about this event, or about the portal, please send it to your network. Please let's, let's tell the world about this, not just, a, just keep this as our, our own little secret. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your day, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening. Bye bye for now. Thank you all. Thank you and goodbye.